Hello everyone, it's Helen here with Helen with Helen. Thank you for joining me today. So over the next couple of weeks, I want to talk about all things health. My channel is based off of hope and it's also based off of health, health related things, different things that I've had to go through. And my goal is to help you if you are going through them to kind of share a little bit of knowledge and some of the experience that I've went through. And also if you haven't, then maybe we can prevent some of the different things that I've had to go through. So either or I just figured it was a great time because we are in spring now. And so I thought today would be a good time to talk about skin cancer prevention. Okay, skin cancer, we already know the word cancer freaks everybody out, at least it does me. You hear the word cancer and it doesn't matter what kind and you're like, <gasps> cancer. However, skin cancer can be prevented. It can be prevented in most cases. And so we're gonna talk about skin care or skin cancer prevention. And we're also going to talk about skin cancer treatments because I was a little girl who spent a ton of time in the sun from the time I probably was walking, I was out in the sun. It didn't matter, I wanted to be out there with it just basking on me. I was always at a lake, I was always at a water park, I was always outside tanning, doing something, I was in the sun. And to this day, I still love the sun. But I have to say, when I was young, I don't think that they had all the different things that they have now to prevent it, honestly. And, it, and if they did, it wasn't in my household, okay? We, we usually had tanning oils, tanning lotions, baby oil, things that you probably shouldn't have been putting on your skin and then basking in the sun in. I grew up in the 70s and 80s and 90s though, so let's let's keep this in mind. And I also spent a little bit of time in the tanning beds, which probably didn't do me any good. You know, you were in the tanning beds before the dances and before summertime hit, so you could wear your short shorts and all the things that you did, right? So anyways, I am now paying the price, unfortunately. So I just wanna talk about my particular situation with skin cancer, because over the last few years, I've had a couple encounters with it. And so it's not always what people think it is because people are looking for different things. You know, I think the common thing is, is people think like, oh, it's going to be this big mark and you're going to be able to tell right away that you have skin cancer. And sometimes it can be very, very subtle and something that you're not even looking for. And in fact, that was my case because it started with a little mark right here in the middle of my neck. And what it was, was it was just a little light pink patch, like it, like just a little tiny, like itchy, like itchy skin patch. But for me, it took a few months before I was just like, oh, is this a problem? Because it just wouldn't go away. And at first I was like, okay, it's dry skin. And I just try to lotion it, put a little oil on it. And then I noticed, I'm like, hmm, this doesn't seem to be wanting to go away. And then it almost got to the point where it started to look like a scratch, like a little scabbed scratch. So like, as if like, maybe you just took your finger and now I'm like, but then it was like a little bit like bloody and it wouldn't go away. And I was like, hmm, that doesn't seem normal. So I had never been to the dermatologist. And to be honest, I probably was a little bit scared to go to the dermatologist from all the years I had spent in the sun and I just kind of have that skin tone anyways you know I'm a little bit freckly and I'm a little bit fair skinned and so I did not want to go to the dermatologist and I had heard horror stories like oh man if they find something they're gonna shove a needle in there and <laughs> oh fear gotta love it so I made the appointment, I went in, met with a great doctor, do your research because I feel like that is critical and key. Have a great doctor, right? Because otherwise you will be traumatized and you won't wanna go back again. So this particular doctor, he was wonderful. I went into it to him, told him it was my first time. I wanted a skin cancer screening. So if you have anything that just looks a little abnormal that you wanna question, go in and talk to them because usually it's not going to be anything. I had so many little bumps and lumps that I was like, you need to look at this and this and this because I had gotten myself so freaked out over it. And he was just like, nope, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Uh, but when we got to this little point right here, he was just like, mm -hmm gonna have to biopsy that one. And I was just like, oh, and that was the one that I was actually the more nervous about, the most nervous about. And so what he ended up doing though was, is he took a little needle and he just superficially just went right underneath the skin and just enough to numb it. So it wasn't terrible. And in fact, I was just coming out of having a major reflux surgery where they had to mess with my esophagus and everything. So I was like panicked, like, oh my goodness, what if, you know, they do something in this area and I'm already having a hard time swallowing and it was so easy breezy. He was so gentle, just went right underneath the skin, made it numb. And then what he did was, is he biopsied it, took a little thing, 
biopsied it off. And then he took a little tool that burns, like a little cauterizing tool, and he burned all the way around it. So that's what he did. So he must have known at that point in time, like, mm, this is something. He didn't tell me. However, he just probably knew, like, ah, I've seen this before. And so I had to wait for the letter to come into the mail to tell me what it was. So at the time, though, it ended up being squamous cell sarcinoma. But it was the beginning stages. So a very, very early stage, almost like a precancerous stage of it. And so I had caught it in time. And guys, that is crazy critical and I believe that is key. If you see something at all like I just talked about because it wasn't like some big dark brown mark or lump or mole like I think people think. It was just a little light pink patch that just was a little bit scratchy, a little bit edgy and that's right there that gave it away. So something very simple but just by me getting in he was able to treat it and he was able to take care of it and it hasn't come back and it hasn't spread. It hasn't anything. Not that I know of to the, to the utmost of my ability but I can tell you it healed up really nice too. It took maybe probably about a month to fully heal because he had to do some burning in there, but I just left it. You can put a little band-aid on it. You can cover it, but I mean, nothing's worth your life, right? And we already know that skin cancer obviously can be deadly, but it is so so, so preventable and it is so treatable as well. And so I had another encounter. This would have been just last year and something very similar happened again. Okay. It was on my chest this time though. For me, the sun loves to beat down on my neck and my chest. It always has. And I have very, very thin skin and it's gotten thinner ever since my hysterectomy as well. So my skin's much more sensitive to the sun and the elements. And so when the sun comes down though, it's going to hit me right here and right on these shoulder blades. Well, my my chest being so thin, I wasn't super surprised that I seen a little patch here. And it came up really out of nowhere. It was after a vacation. We were in Mexico. And when I got back, I noticed right away, I was like, mm, this feels a little rough, a little rugged. I'm going to watch it. So I did all the natural things. I tried to put like lotions on it, creams on it, aloe vera. I just tried to do everything that I could but it wasn't healing. And so I had to make my appointment, went in, asked again, like, well, what, does this look funny? Does this look funny? Nope, nope, nope. Eee, we're gonna biopsy this one. Okay, and it was very similar to the one that I had had here. So what he did this time though was, as he poked the little needle in, guys, it's just a little pinch and a sting. So for anybody who's told you horror stories, now I know that some probably hurt a little worse than others, depending on where you have to get it. So I'm not gonna deny that. However, if I can do it, I trust me, you can do it. <laughs> if I can, you can. Um, and so it just was a little sting, a little pinch. And what he ended up doing on this one is took a tool that almost looked like a little like ice cream scoop. So it was different than the first time. The first time was kind of like a cut and like the cauterizing. I was expecting the same type of treatment since it looked similar to me. However, this time he just took it, scooped it out, and that was it. He left it. And he was just like, okay, we did a biopsy. That's it. And I was just like, oh, that's it. So I was a little bit nervous because I thought, wow, last time we cauterized it and it was so effective and it worked. And I was hoping he was going to do it to this one, thinking it was the same. So again, he knew what he was doing and I waited for the letter in the mail to come. However, this one was not a squamous cell sarcinoma. This one was a basal cell sarcinoma. So it was a little bit different. I don't really know the differences. So you'd have to research that. However, this one um, said we biopsied it, that was the treatment, and it should be taken care of. If you have any further problems, let us know. So basically, the treatment was that little ice cream scoop, scooping it out deep enough to get it. And so, so far, so good. I haven't seen it. It has healed up so nice. It did take a, a minute or two to heal, though. This one was a little bit itchy, a little more painful. But um, I don't know if it's, again, because I'm so thin-skinned right here. Um, however, it's healed now. No scar. Amazing. And I haven't seen it come back. But I already know going into the spring right now that we're in, in the summer, I'm going to want to lather myself from this day forward, really. Um, going to want to always have on sunscreen. Definitely going to want to make sure that you're wearing those SPF um, t-shirts and tanks. And, and I make it a point now because I love to be outside. I love to walk outside and hike outside. I love to travel. And everywhere I like to go is a warm climate, right? It's either Mexico, Florida, somewhere. And in fact, you know, that's where I want to move. So I'm really going to have to be super duper careful, especially now with the fact that I've had a couple scares with the skin cancer. So if you get a chance this year, I just say schedule your yearly screening. Don't be afraid. Circle anything on your body or put little dots next to something you want to look at. 
more than like likely it's nothing because I mean again like I said me being kind of a fair skin kind of freckly person I had so many marks on me I was just like what about this what about this no 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 so most of the stuff is nothing it's very natural it's very normal it's just your skin some of it's just the aging process age marks this and that stuff that we're going to have to deal with but every once in a while the doctor will catch something and I love that because we're catching it and we're taking care of it and a couple of, like sunscreens I just I mean that work for me um this one right here has been amazing. I don't even know if they make it anymore though, because I just, I bought this like probably two years ago, but it is so rich and thick and it just goes on so smoothly. And I feel like it's really been effective when like on my chest and stuff, because like, again, the sun wants to be down there, but I've been using this body butter and it's by super goop. So I don't know, super goop makes a lot of different sunscreens. So if you get a chance, maybe look at, I get it off of Sephora, but you can probably get it a lot of different places. So, but yes, super goop. And this particular one, like I said, was called the body butter with sea buckthorn. <laughs> but I love it. So I'm hoping they still do make it because I'm running on empty here. And then same thing with the chapsticks because my lips like to burn and they've been burned a million times in the sun. So they've even been blistered. I've, you guys, I've had third degree burns probably more than I care to admit. It. Not because um, I, well, honestly, because I was probably being a little irresponsible. Sometimes it was my fault because, you know, I just didn't um, sunscreen up. But, you know, just being a kid, like I said, whether you be at the water park or outside or at the lake for a weekend and stuff, I mean, we would come back and we'd have blisters on our shoulders. We'd have blisters on our nose and on our cheeks and different, on our lips, different things like that. All the years spending in Mexico, I was a flight attendant, so I got to travel to these warm spaces and just a lot of sun exposure has done a lot to my body. And so now, I'm taking that extra time to take very, very, very good care of my body in my 40s and 50s and 60s and from this point forward. And so, um, but this one right here, the lip balm is super goop again, and this works amazing. So I've noticed like it has like a nice little sheer and shine to it. And then even on the beach, you could be on the beach all day long and your lips don't get blistered with this guy right here. As long as you keep putting it on, you got to keep reapplying, you know, so, but this has been wonderful. So if you get a chance, I'd get some of that too. And then this one's okay too. This Hawaiian Tropic, not too bad. My husband uses this one. So he does well with that on the beach. And so he tends to kind of get some burning as well. But I just say, prevention now I'm doing that and instead of heading to the tanning beds or whatever like I used to do um, now I'm more into just just being like this color right here <laughs> or the spray tans there's lots of healthy stuff out there now so spray tan it up those are great they'll last seven to ten days as long as you just keep it moisturized you can get a lot of really cool like uh, organic stuff at home like spray tan wise to put on you just to get a little color because we all feel better when we have a little color right? It just makes us feel healthy, makes us feel good about ourselves and stuff. So we all still like that color, but we just have to be careful about how we get it. So anyways, I hope that this video helped you and I hope that you have an amazing spring out there in the sunshine. And again, just get yourself some SPF shirts and make sure you're applying that sunscreen. Have a great day. Bye.